Obrigada. Muito bom dia a todos. Está aberta a sessão eh, da cerimónia de atribuição do Prémio Norte-Sul do Conselho da Europa. Senhor Presidente da República, Senhor Presidente do Tribunal Constitucional, Antigo Presidente da República, Dr. Jorge Sampaio, Senhores Membros do Governo, Senhores Vice-Presidentes da Assembleia da República e Presidentes dos Grupos Parlamentares, Senhor Secretário-Geral do Conselho da Europa, Senhor Presidente da Delegação da Assembleia da República à Assembleia Parlamentar do Conselho da Europa, Deputado Mota Amaral, em representação da Presidente da Assembleia Parlamentar do Conselho da Europa, Senhor Presidente do Comitê Executivo do Centro Norte-Sul, Antigo Presidente da Assembleia da República, Dr. António de Almeida Santos, Senhoras e Senhores Deputados, Senhores Embaixadores, Distintos Laureados. Numa pequena introdução a esta cerimónia, quero dizer bem-vindos à Assembleia da República a esta cerimónia de atribuição do Prémio Norte-Sul. O prémio dirige-se aos fazedores de pontes, a mais bela tarefa a cada ser humano cometida. Pontes de uns para os outros, para que todos se sintam em casa neste mundo. Entre eles estão Maura Lintz, com a sua coragem de mostrar lugares onde os direitos humanos gritam e a doença se cruza com a pobreza e o esquecimento e, em geral, a opinião pública não chega. E André Azulay, que afirma persistente que a humanidade é afinal a soma das civilizações. Combatendo os muros que nos separam, da pobreza à segregação étnica, à geografia, os fazedores de pontes mostram-nos a evidência de que todos temos afinal uma única condição. São homens e mulheres que assim celebramos, os que respondem, como um dia disse Ana Arendt, ao pedido de socorro dos homens, para que a nossa dignidade comum seja em toda a linha garantida. Essa é a mensagem que nos deixa o percurso dos dois premiados, a quem dirigimos a nossa gratidão. Parabéns a eles e ao Centro Norte-Sul pelos seus 25 anos. Em boa hora o Sr. Presidente da República, no mês de junho de 1988, ainda Primeiro-Ministro, propôs num fórum internacional a formação de um centro, que viria a ser este Centro Norte-Sul. Um... Congratulations to the uh, uh, President of the Republic who on the 28th of, uh, on, on uh, June uh, 1998, when he was Prime Minister, really set the ball rolling to create the North-South Centre, which was a project between NGOs, parliamentarians, governments and international institutions uh, to emancipate people uh, through uh, Equality, equality of peoples. I will now pass the floor to Jean-Marie uh, Ait, who is the President of the Executive Committee of the North South Centre. You have the floor, sir. Monsieur le Président. President of the Republic of Portugal, Speaker of the Portuguese Parliament, uh, Members of Parliament, Secretary-General of the Council of Europe, Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, Laureates. Firstly, on behalf of the Executive Committee of the North-South Centre, I should like to express my gratitude and recognition for the constant support and resolve given to us by the Portuguese authorities. Once again, we are here in the Portuguese Parliament to pay tribute to two personalities who have distinguished themselves in an exemplary fashion through their commitment to the universal values of humanity. As president of the jury of this award, I should like to pay tribute to the determination of the laureates in their undertakings, their extraordinary undertakings to the service of uh, contemporaries and for peace. The purpose of the North-South Prize is to provide recognition uh, of the merit of men and women who, through their choices and their actions, have striven to defend democracy and human dignity. Sister Maura Lynch and Mr. André Azoulay have this in common. 
in both their lives, they have incarnated the very essence of the North-South Center values, interdependence and world solidarity through intercultural dialogue and understanding between religions between the North and the South. The work of Sister uh, Mora and Dr. Azuli are particularly remarkable since these are people from civil society. And it is through their faith and their belief in humanity and their values that moved them to take up service to solidarity and cultural diversity. Sister Mora and Mr. Azoulay, it is today with great esteem and respect that we pay tribute to your work. You have gone beyond borders, you have disseminated these values that we share, and we hope that through the North-South Prize, you will be able to be further recognized and be a model for building of a better world. Going beyond words, I should like to give you a few details. Sister Mora is an example of solidarity. She has dedicated her life to others, even in her most personal choices. From a young age, she became a missionary in Africa. She studied in order to be able to provide assistance and vital care for those, uh, particularly women, who needed it most. Through her actions and her work in the Medical Missionaries of Mary, she has enabled numerous children, women and men in Africa to enjoy one of the most fundamental rights, that is, the right to live a healthy life. Thanks to her, thanks to her determination and her untiring efforts, she made it possible for the Kitovu hospital complex to have the largest obstetric fistula unit in Africa and to put the spotlight on this condition and also issues such as child marriage, poverty and gender discrimination. Thus, working uh, for the weakest, Sister Mora has not only made it possible to treat fistula but also she has made it possible for women to find their dignity once again. Andre Azoulé, we all know to what extent his contribution to cultural cultural dialogue has been essential, the construction of friendship between communities. He had relentlessly advocated in favor of possible coexistence between, between communities and living together. He has managed to reveal the wealth of the cultural diversity in the Mediterranean, in Europe, and also in the Middle East. What a road has been travelled since the inception of his organisation, Identité et Dialogue, to encourage reconciliation and dialogue between Israel, uh, Palestine, between Jews and Muslims, going as far as the presidency of the Anna Lind Foundation, where his determination and devotion has contributed to intercultural dialogue through uh, Pacific means between people, communities and religions. Even focusing even more uh, on his role as advisor to His Majesty the King of Morocco since 1991, Mr. Azoulay has contributed to encouraging dialogue and cooperation between Morocco and the rest of the world. We have strong links and a special relationship with Morocco, as you know. Uh, it has been a member state of the North South Centre since 2009 and a partner for democracy in the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. Andrea Azoulay is a very imminent uh, person with great influence in the Mediterranean and the Israeli-Palestine dialogue. His foresight with regard to intercultural dialogue is of particular value today at a time when lack of trust between people is being aggregated by the rise in terrorism. Through this ceremony today and through the work of our laureates, we are paying tribute to the work of civil society. Civil society, which is the key factor in terms of changing society. Following the example of our laureates, the dialogue and solidarity between continents, religions, communities can be a force against uh, preconceived ideas, discrimination and hatred. The responsibility for creating this strength falls on civil society and it is the responsibility of the institutions and the governments to support choices 
that are taken in civil society. In this context, therefore, the North-South Centre wishes to pursue its aims of promoting intercultural dialogue uh, along the criteria of interdependence and solidarity and um, provide a unique platform for a structured, balanced dialogue between Europe and the neighbouring states and the different protagonists of good governance. Thus, through disseminating the values of the Council of Europe, the North-South Centre will continue to participate in consolidating democracy by strengthening the role of civil society, and particularly the role of women and young people. I will conclude by saying to what extent we all are responsible as citizens and, above all, as human beings to commit ourselves to solidarity. Uh, in a cosmopolitan approach. The democratic ideal can only become reality if the commitment and the conviction of women and men can be rooted in the same values which have guided our laureates, friendship for people and love for the other. Therefore, my sincere hope is that the work of our laureates can enjoy the fullest recognition in order to become a source of inspiration for the greater good. Congratulations to you. Thank you. I now give the floor to uh, the floor to the uh, president of the uh, president of the uh, um, delegation of the Portuguese Assembly to the Council of Europe, Mr. Mota Amaral. You have the floor, sir. President of the Republic, Speaker of the Portuguese Parliament, Secretary General of the Council of Europe, Chair of the Executive Committee of the North South Centre, Distinguished Laureates of the 2014 North South Prize, uh, Sister Maura Lynch and Mr. André Azoulay, esteemed bodies, illustrious guests, members of Parliament, ladies and gentlemen. The for, former Senate chamber of uh, Sao Bento Palace, which before the First Republic was the hemicycle of the Chamber of Peers of our constitutional monarchy, is putting on its best face once again to welcome the highest entities of the Portuguese state and the Council of Europe, meeting here to celebrate the laureates of the 2014 North South Prize, Sister Maura Lynch and Mr. André Azoulé. There is a long list of personalities who, since uh, its creation in 1995, have been awarded the North-South Prize of the Council of Europe, and they include prestigious leaders of world renown who have added to its well-recognized standing. The laureates this year have both dedicated their entire lives to the cause of human rights to the service of men and women who are the most fragile and unprotected, to dialogue between cultures, witnessing through uh, their personal involvement in uh, difficult uh, missions that uh, require great work and sacrifice their dedication. The tasks um, they have carried out can make both feel, I am sure, they have performed a uh, sterling duty and thanks to the good they have spread to so many people, this is an even greater source of joy. For the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, whose uh, President and Brasa I have the honour of uh, representing and in, on whose behalf I speak, this initiative of the North-South Centre fully illustrates the faithful compliance of the aim identified when it was founded. In fact, uh, Portuguese initiative during the mandate of the then Prime Minister uh, Anibal Cavaco Silva, who is now President of the Republic. 
The Parliamentary Assem Assembly is delighted at the resilience of the North-South Centre, which triumphs over incomprehension and the exit of some founding member states, attracting always uh, new institutional members, both in Europe and Africa. And to that end, the invo personal involvement of President Kavaku Silva has been invaluable, as has recently been seen in, on his state visit to Romania and Bulgaria, and uh, through the support of the Aga Khan Foundation, which the Council of Europe is pleased to acknowledge. The tragic events of recent months uh, on the Mediterranean Sea mean that we have to reflect responsibly and we have to make a renewed uh, contribution to Euro European and African solidarity. It's within this field that we find the genetic code of the North-South Centre. People, men, women and children, who set out to sea in, on fragile vessels aiming at the um, opulent beaches of Europe, even though it's in the midst of a crisis, are not just victims of uh, traffickers, and nor is it uh, the right answer to go to the uh, port ports of departure to uh, sink their boats with uh, gunfire in a return to the gunboat diplomacy so darkly remembered. These are human beings. They're full of fear and anguish, fleeing war, oppression, poverty, raging in their home countries, massacred by um, apocalyptic misfortunes. Their unhappiness and of the many more who aren't able to escape from their countries calls for mutual aid. And that's the way we have to see things urgently. Now, through our own experience, we know that economic, social, cultural and political development bring with them freedom, democracy, respect for human rights, in other words, and they also bring peace. Neither the North-South Centre nor the Council of Europe can take on such a project alone. It is the work of the international community as a whole, but the persistent and dedicated action of the North-South Centre and the Council of Europe, through all of its bodies, is contributing to consolidate the doctrine and the practice of recognizing the preeminent and inviolable dignity of the individual, which uh, Sister Maura Lynch and Mr. Andre Azoulay are um, outstanding living examples. This solemn ceremony takes full significance when to the celebration and congratulations uh, to the laureates, we add our individual and collective commitment uh, to the ever topical cause of human rights. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Motaparal. The floor now to the Secretary General of the Council of Europe, Mr. Chorna Yagland. You have the floor, sir. President of the Republic, Speaker of the Portuguese Parliament, Deputies, ladies and gentlemen, and dear laureates, Mora Lynch and André Azoulay, it's a great pleasure for me to be together with you here. What unites today's winners? One, a Moroccan or Jewish descent, advisor to two kings, the current one and the late one, trained economist, peace broker, globally renowned for his efforts to promote a two-state solution between Israel and Palestine, a man who has devoted most of his life to enhancing dialogue between cultures and religions. 
The other, an Irish doctor, a nun, a woman who has spent decades improving the health and welfare of countless other women and children, first in Angola and then in Uganda, and who has successfully mobilized medics and surgeons from around the world to do the same. On paper, they look uh, very different, both extraordinary, but very different still. And yet, there is an invisible thread which runs between over two laureates. It is their shared and unshakable commitment to the pursuit of human dignity, to the worth and value of every single human being, no matter what, who they are or where they come from. This belief in human dignity is why the Council of Europe exists. We were born out of the wreckage of the Second World War, as Europe's leaders sought to build peace on new foundations, democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. We were Europe's nations coming together to say, no one is worthless, no one is dispensable, no single faith or world view should be destroyed at the hands of others. We have a duty to promote the life chances of every single man, woman, and child. These values are embodied in Dr. Maura Lynch and Adre Os Asulei, and they are values which grow more important by the day. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the truth is, these are not easy times for tolerance and solidarity. Not in the north or in the south, not in rich countries or in poor. Across the world, we are seeing ongoing economic hardship and growing poverty and inequality. Wherever you look, certain individuals and groups are being denied jobs, opportunities and fundamental rights. There is tension across many of our societies as they struggle to cope with mass migration and their found, newfound diversity. We face conflicts, terrorism, including last week's day of global bloodshed, a migrant crisis in the Mediterranean, an international system that is struggling to give people answers. I cannot remember a time when, in so many nations, the forces of, of division were so strong. And who is seeking to capitalize on all this uncertainty? Populists, xenophobes, corrupt elites, individuals and organizations who thrive on mistrust and hate. So in these difficult and fragmented times, I want to pay an extra special tribute to this year's winners. Not only have you helped many, many people, but in the face of growing fear, you represent the only antidote, hope. Today is the first time I've met with you, Mora Lynch. It's a great pleasure to meet with a person that has only one agenda, namely to work for other people, to care for other people. That's what we really need in today's world. I have met with André Azoulay earlier, several times. The first time was when Shimon Peres introduced you to me in Israel. We met in Morocco later on. And one day, actually, I met you on the streets in your hometown, Esa Uiria this very beautiful city, which I know that you love. I mention this because, I, as you know, I am from Norway. So one, the most famous author for children, he illustrated his most famous book from that city because he saw that in this city, everybody was nice, and the only law that they needed was that everybody should be nice. Uh, perhaps with those roots, you were destined to follow 
his path. Uh, so it gives me a great pleasure to see you both receive the award on behalf of, of the Council of Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Jagland. I shall now invite the President of the Republic to award the prizes to Maura Lynch and Andre Azulay. I now give the floor to Sister Maura Lynch. Excellency, Mr. President of the Republic of Portugal, Madam President of the Assembly of the Republic, Mr. Secretary General of the Council of Europe, and Excellency President of Portuguese Parliament's delegation to the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, Chair of the Executive Committee of the North-South Centre, Honourable Member of the uh, members of the Assembly of the Republic, government ministers and members of Parliament, fellow laureate, Mr. André Azoulay, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honour for me to receive this reward, award here in Lisbon today from the European Council for my ministry in the Southern Hemisphere. This honour is not only for me, but also for my family, represented here by my sister Brida, for my medical missionary of Mary family, the sisters of the medical missionaries of Mary congregation, but also for my colleagues in, the, in Kitovu Hospital in Masaka, Uganda, and the Fistula team, without whom the Fistula program would not have been possible. Also, it is an honour for our generous donors and supportive friends in Ireland, the UK, USA and Uganda. I also salute the fistula sufferers, some of whom have suffered incontinence of urine with all its inconveniences, 
of being wet all the time, smelling of urine, and undergoing degradation, loss of dignity, and being marginalized in extreme poverty for many years. They may also be incontinent of, of feces if rectal damage has ensued at the time. All this re resulting from birth injury due to neglected, unassisted, obstructed labor. Just last year, I treated an 85-year-old lady who had been leaking urine following birth injury 40 years previously. 40 years of indignity after the loss of nine of her 10 children. Can you imagine the joy of new life, new dignity, and self-worth this dear lady enjoyed full, on full restoration of health and continence following surgical repair? She and I danced together. It is indeed a privilege to be part of this well worthwhile ministry. But today, in 2015, birth injuries should not occur because all are preventable. So we must focus on prevention, aimed at one, education of the girl child and the adolescent better nutrition for girls, antenatal care in pregnancy, we can predict the likelihood of problems in the antenatal care, professional help, in, the, in, in other words, a presence of a midwife in labor and delivery. And lastly, but not least, emergency care and resources at hand. Availability of cesarean section for non-traumatic delivery. But focusing on prevention, we must not forget the hundreds of thousands already suffering from obstetric fistula who in shame and silence remain hidden on the margins of society, rejected by family, by clan, by society, and having lost all self-respect, live in appalling circumstances trying to hide in the shame of their wetness and smell. These women have a right to their dignity. In Uganda, the most re recent surveys quoted 192,000 sufferers of fistula, mostly vesicovaginal, with a 5% rectovaginal fistula as well, and some 10% also have sciatic nerve damage resulting in dropped foot or inability to raise one or both feet on walking. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenge before us is huge, the challenge to end fistula. We must reduce and clear the backlog of existing fistula, total prevention of preventable fistula, and reach the target of end fistula. How do we respond to this challenge? One, training of more medical personnel to repair vaginal and rectal defects. Two, surgical repair must be free, or these women cannot afford and they won't come for repair. Therefore, funding is essential. Following repair, we must look after the reintegration back into society of healed, continent women with their dignity restored. For this, training in income generation and crafts and other simple means to help them to be self-sustaining. As the ages range from teens to over 60, we must also encourage the young, fertile women to attend antenatal classes and have caesarean sections for safe delivery for the post-repair baby. So let us go forth together so that we can bring about a more pleasant, just, and happily populated world. <coughs> Sincere thanks for your attention, and God bless you all.
Muito obrigada, senhor. Thank you very much, Mr. Mora, and once again, congratulations. I now give the floor to Mr. Andre Azulai. Monsieur le Président de la République. President of the Republic, Speaker of the Portuguese Parliament, Secretary General of the Council of Europe, President of the Executive Council of the North South Centre, ladies and gentlemen, Members of Parliament, Your Excellencies. I find myself today in this building on the 1st of July 2015 and receiving an award from the Council of Europe and the North South Centre. This is no ordinary event for me. This is no ordinary award that I receive with great pleasure and honour. We are living through times and a space which have become one of fear, of rupture, uh, the time of failure, failure of the community of nations in its most prestigious uh, institutions, the United Nations, UNESCO and others, who have been unable to provide the inadequate response to the challenges that we face collectively today. This award given me today by the Council of Europe and the North-South Centre touches me greatly because in multinational, multilateral, regional, inter-regional institutions, the signature of the Council of Europe and the North-South Centre has particular value for me. Secretary General of the Council of Europe, President of the North South Centre, you have provided civil society uh, with a place for culture where others have failed. I am therefore very proud happy and indeed moved to see that my crusade over the last half century for public opinions to be listened to, for our civilizations, our religions, our identities and histories be not instrumentalized by people who are hostages to others and used in political terms to bring us back in time. It is my privilege, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, follow the mandate given to me by my country and try and strive for the art of the impossible. I'm a Moroccan citizen. We are Jews, Berbers, Arabs, And I exist and I resist and I refuse my religion and my history and my identity, my civilization, to be instrumentalized in order to become an instrument to push the world back in time and bring fear back to the banks of the Mediterranean when it had already left our shores for some time. The hope, as you said, Secretary General, uh, we had been permitted to hope just a mere 15 or 10 years ago. We have all moved back and now we do not know what the correct political and institutional uh, response is. Uh, we don't know what the uh, responsible modern response is to give to the community of nations. 
So I think we need to take the measure of this uh, area, of this world, the fact that we have moved back in time and the community of nations path in recent years. I have always uh, refused to adhere to this theory, uh, the clash of civilizations, the clash of our religions and of our cultures. The only clash that I know is the clash of ignorance, the great Arabic um, philosopher of, said that the true enemy, the enemy of man, is ignorance. When we no longer uh, recognize ourselves, or when we no longer meet each other, when we fear each other, as is the case in 2015. By receiving this award today, Um, after one week ago, there were so many victims uh, in Tunis, in Kuwait, in Paris, in France, in Somalia, in, e in Egypt. We really cannot celebrate dialogue and tolerance today and peace without really taking stock of this drama that... Uh, is present in our daily lives. Ladies and gentlemen, President of the Republic, Secretary General of the Council of Europe, President of the North-South Centre, Speaker of the Portuguese Parliament, thank you for giving me this opportunity today of saying to you that we must not give up on this fight. We must not sit back and be spectators the community of nations needs to reinvent itself in order to resist and to refuse failure. We need to reconquest, reconquer uh, modernity. And I say this to you once again uh, by returning to my own country, Morocco. We have been audacious enough under the auspices of His Majesty uh, the King Mohammed VI to suggest to the people a constitution that was in adopted in July 2011 and which is the only one in the world that states that contemporary Morocco today has been forged and fed and chiseled by the Berber civilization, by Judaism, by the Arabic and Muslim society, and by the African society. I don't know any other country that states this uh, clearly in its fundamental texts in such a clear way. This message, ladies and gentlemen, this is the father of Islam that says this. Islam is not just what you read in your newspapers every day. It's not just the Islam that you see every evening on the television. It is the Islam of light, of modernity, of the enlightenment, of courage, and of resistance. And I, as a Jew, say this to you from this stand. Let me conclude by recalling uh, my birthplace, Secretary General. You were kindly enough to refer to it earlier on. Yes, I do know it a little bit, but I didn't know that it was the most read cartoons were inspired by this muse, Mogador, which is like music to the Portuguese ears. Mogador Visfaira once, uh, I would like to invite you to come to us at the end of October and come to this unique meeting when Jews and Muslims come together to embrace each other and to dance together, to sing together, to express 
their brotherly feelings, their fraternity, with in mutual respect and commitment and convictions of each one. It, this happens in Morocco, ladies and gentlemen, and this happens in Islam. You know this today. And I would like once again to express my gratitude and recognition for enabling me to share these thoughts with you and to leave this room and leave Lisbon convinced that many of us are involved in this struggle and the time has not come to abandon it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Andrea Zore, uh, our laureate. Congratulations again. I now pass the floor to the President of the Portuguese Republic. Speaker of the Portuguese Parliament, uh, President of the Constitutional Court, Secretary General of the Council of Europe, Jorge Sampaio, Minister of Foreign Affairs, President of the Executive Committee of the North South Centre, President of the Delegation of the Portuguese Parliament to the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, Executive Director of the North South Centre, Honoured Laureates, Members of Parliament, Ambassadors, Ladies and Gentlemen, today, once again, we meet in this House of Democracy to award the North South Prize of the Council of Europe. It is always with particular satisfaction that I take part in this ceremony. Over the years, Despite the fact that the North South Centre has undergone change, all the distinguished uh, people who have been distinguished by this prize have shared a fundamental tray. Their highly deserving action in fostering the common values set within the matrix of the Council of Europe, these individuals have directly contributed to protecting human rights, to defending democracy and rule of law, to promoting freedom and intercultural dialogue, and to raising awareness of global interdependence and world solidarity. Through its experience and the relevance of its values, the Centre plays a key and proactive role in promoting dialogue and cooperation involving a wide range of entities and organizations. The North-South Prize has honored individuals who come from a range of different backgrounds. This proves the diversity and plural, plur, plurality of the institution which awards the prize. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm deeply honored to take part in this just tribute to Maura Lynch and Andre Azoulay. Sister and Dr. Maura Lynch is a surgeon and obstetrician. For many years she has devoted herself indefatigably to the promotion and protection of the fundamental rights of the most deprived people, and in particular of young women. She has had an extensive fulfilled career in the service of the medical missionaries of Mary. After a spell in Lisbon to study, she lived for 20 years in Angola and over two decades in Uganda, where she cooperated in setting up a clinic at 
Kitovu Hospital specializing in surgery to treat uh, post-obstetric uh, pelvic trauma, which is a serious social and medical problem among women, especially in rural areas. Through her work and through her perseverance, uh, Sister Moira Lynch has played an active role in advocating women's rights to primary health care and in defending their dignity and very often in their survival. The recognition she has achieved throughout her career bears clear witness to her dedication and determination, but it also bears witness to the importance of her work. Andrea Zoulé, advisor to His Majesty the King of Morocco since 1991 with a distinguished career in economics, has over the years been involved in strengthening dialogue between cultures, populations and men and women from around the Mediterranean. His contribution to the peace process in the Middle East by promoting relations between Jews and Muslims is also uh, well recognized. During a rich and multifaceted career, Andrea Zoulet has been president of the Anna Lint uh, Euro Mediterranean Foundation for dialogue between cultures. He is a member of the high level group for the Alliance of Civilizations set up by the United Nations. He is also executive president of the Foundation for Three Cultures and Three Religions based in Seville. And he is one of the founders of the Aladdin group, which promotes intercultural relations between the Islamic community and the rest of the world. Amongst the honors being awarded today, I would like to highlight, on the one hand, the focus on human rights and in particular women's rights. The work of Maura Lynch shows that much still remains to be done in this field, but at the same time it encourages us to persevere. I would also like to emphasize the focus on dialogue between Europe and the southern Mediterranean, one of the uh, focal points of Andre Azoulay's work, this relationship between Europe and its neighbors um, is fundamental. And in this context, the Mediterranean remains a highly challenging key area. These two awards bring a deserved recognition uh, for the spirit of initiative and commitment of these award winners who, through their real actions, have chosen to take on highly significant responsibilities in our societies. Ladies and gentlemen, Over the last year, the North-South Centre has been celebrating 25 years in the service of awareness raising of the topics of global interdependence and the promotion of solidarity in line with the goals and principles advocated by the Council of Europe. Notwithstanding the great changes that have arisen worldwide over the last 25 years, the reason behind the creation of the North South Centre remains valid. The troubled times in which we live, marked by increased radicalism, intolerance and violence, to which the tragic events this year alone in Paris, Copenhagen, Tunis and Sousses attest, strengthen the need to continue to foster intercultural dialogue, democracy and human rights, and to raise awareness of the reality of global interdependence. The Centre's role in promoting the values and mission of the Council of Europe uh, remains as relevant as ever. In this context, the need to give a voice and a more active role to civil society and its most uh, vulnerable sectors takes on particular significance. And this means particularly through the development of policies that promote better education for democracy, or democratic citizenship and the participation of young people in political life. Winning over people to this task is the best way of effectively and uh, enduringly counter the totalitarian threats 
and the attempts to suppress peace and fundamental liberties which overshadow our societies. The Centre has been in the front line of this civic fight for a clearer understanding of global independence and an increasingly robust role of civil society by empowering young people and women. In recent times, we have been delighted to witness the renewed dynamic of the Centre's activity, particularly its ability to attract new member states and to obtain financial support for its activities, in addition to the accession of Croatia and, one hopes soon, Tunisia, I've had the opportunity to be apprised firsthand of Bulgaria's and Romania's intention to join the centre, an announcement that was actually made during the state visits I made to these countries about two weeks ago. I would like to appeal to the diplomatic representatives present here today I call upon all of you to persuade the relevant authorities in your countries to broaden these dynamics and this political impact through uh, greater support in your countries for this important instrument of the Council of Europe, which is the North-South Centre. In the knowledge that each country will find the best way to contribute to that end. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, President. The session is now closed.